Welcome. You're at home with Jim and Joy. You're an important part of this EWTN family, and we want to hear from you. Send us an email with your questions or comments to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Again, today we have back with us Dr. Ray Gurendi, EWTN favorite. He joins us again this day. We had a blessed conversation yesterday on building strong marriages, and he joins us again today. His latest book is called Simple Steps to a Stronger Marriage, available at EWTNRC.com. Again, it's great to be with you. Joy is with her family of origin and uh, just there among her family uh, with a health issue in that family among her uh, you know, seven other siblings. And so she's right where she needs to be, and we ask your prayers for her and, and for her family at this time. So it, it was wonderful. I can't recommend more highly the book, um, Simple Steps to a Stronger Marriage, and they are really simple steps, and Dr. Ray really makes that point, that these are things you should know. Maybe you were taught when you were a child. Uh, maybe you knew them when you were first married, but now they're kind of slipping away from you or you're not practicing them. And it's like being in a counseling session with Dr. Ray. And so this is what he's learned through his years of counseling, some matters that come up repeatedly, that if, if they're remedied, and that's up to the couple if they want to do it or not, Dr. Ray will point out you know, what the difficulty is here. Um, if they remedy those, there's this cascading effect, he said. You know, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. Bad thing, one bad thing to another, to another. Good things. One good thing to another good thing until, I think he says at the end, building a ladder, that, a wonderful ladder to, to the Lord and, and of hope. And so some of the key things that he mentions that we need to be doing or not doing, say, I'm sorry. Don't say it. There's some things you want to say that you're never going to be able to get back. Just don't, don't say it. How do I know when I'm going to say that thing? How do I you know, modify myself so that I don't say it. Listen a minute. What's true listening? What's the benefit of just listening a minute? Ask questions. Accept it. Dump the D word. He did a great one on that, on the divorce word. Use your manners. That's an interesting thought. Manners in marriage. Maybe we teach our children manners. Do we have manners in our marriage? Respect for the dignity of your spouse. Make a list. Add a touch. Where does touch fit in? meaningful touch, a sacramental touch in the marriage. And then, uh, so he makes all these points and then he says, here's why we're not doing what we should be doing. And he addresses that and then he gives scenarios in it and outcomes. So it's like you're right there with him. So if you love Dr. Ray, you've listened to his recommendations, you'll be right there in a counseling session with Dr. Ray if you get simple steps to a stronger marriage. So thanks for being here today. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. What a joy to have Dr. Ray Garendi here with us today. Don't forget, you can always watch Living Right with Dr. Ray every Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time here on EWTN. Check EWTN.com for showtimes in your area. Dr. Ray's latest book is called Simple Steps to a Stronger Marriage. Go to EWTNRC.com. Dr. Ray's website, drray.com. Com. Well, a lot of publicity for you to keep I think it's rather side. significant <laughs> that you said what a joy, given that joy's not with us. I, I have to be the joy. I'm not sure I could do that. <laughs> it is a delight to have you, and no one would enjoy you more than joy would enjoy you. She really loves your work. She enjoyed the book. And so just uh, for the people who weren't with us last show, and might be a pretty high percentage each show, new people come in. So just give it a nutshell, why this book, what you're hoping it will communicate to people. I love the title, simple, keep it simple. So it's not that this isn't doable, they are very doable, but, but just share. Most marriages are not pathological, Jim. Most marriages drift apart. Most marriages, I don't like you anymore. Most marriages, I just don't put much effort into it anymore. I'm lazy, yeah. I get sloppy. When you do something simple, people are more likely to do it. 
If you give them something simple that they can go, and you talked about this before, you, you said, well, it's something we know. And somebody once told me that the, the advice that sticks most with people is when they can react, ah, sure, I know that. Sticks with them. Keep it simple, give you some simple steps yeah. that in my clinical practice, I've seen have had dramatic improvements in the marriage, like a ripple effect, a cascade effect throughout the whole marriage. You wouldn't think something this small that you did consistently would actually turn around some of the other hot spots in the marriage. Yeah. That's hopeful because usually people come in with a whole bag of things or a great magnitude of things and you're saying, well, from listening to you both, this is what I'm telling you, what, I, what I'm hearing here, and what you can do. Oh, but that's just one thing. Well, one thing leads to another thing, yes. leads to another thing, and this is a positive, positive thing here. Um, so let's share one of the parts of your book that I really appreciated and I've experienced in my life is that there are some people that say and do things because they really feel that. I actually had somebody who I really you know, love and respect. She was a bit younger, so maybe that allowed it a little bit. And like the behavior and what she was saying just you know wasn't you know very Christian or right or and, and she well I really feel this mm -hmm. and I would not be you know genuine to myself if I didn't say, I'd be a hypocrite that's what it was I'm a hypocrite if I don't say and really believed it I was like and so I tried to help her but so where does this fit into your book if I really feel it then I've got to act upon this or I'm a hypocrite with the shrinks as the point of the spear Jim we've convinced pretty much a whole culture that feelings are what matter. You act according to feelings, because they're legitimate. They are real. The problem with feelings, first of all, they're transitory. Second of all, they are based upon thoughts. If I'm gonna get angry at you and I have this angry feeling, I need to ask myself, what am I thinking that's making me so upset? This doesn't come out of nowhere. The other problem is this. If I have a certain preference, you know, Jim, I'm about ready to tell you off for you making the fourth snarky remark you made at that party yesterday. My feeling is I'm going to do this. That's not a feeling. That's a preference. That's a want. I want to tell Jim off. That feeling isn't driving me. But what happens is, like your friend said, yeah. I would be a hypocrite if I denied that feeling. So if I don't tell Jim off, Right. Am I being a hypocrite? You see what's happened? Psychology has taken Christianity and turned it on its head. Because Christianity says, wait a minute. You don't follow your impulses if they're bad impulses. You control them. Who says that? Christianity. Psychology says, well, you know, if that's a legitimate impulse, you've got to express it. Because if you don't express it, you're going to have all kinds of bad psychological repercussions. Yeah, that, that leads to disaster and it leads to ongoing resentment. It leads to a lack of forgiveness. I can't tell you how many all times. culture. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I was so grateful I didn't act upon my feelings. Okay. Later, later those feelings weren't there anymore. And later, I would have had to deal with the fallout of the, of the hurt relationships or the nasty thing that I said or saying it in confession again for the 19th time. Yeah. Well, so. that's, that's one of your steps. Just don't say it. Like Father John Paul in the last show was talking about you know, the pillowcase being open, all the feathers coming out because you said it, and you can't gather them back up. I guess you can say I'm sorry, which is, which is the other part of it. But you're saying the best thing is don't say it. How do I know when not to say something? Where do I get the power not to do it? Maybe that's also in wait a minute. You know, how, how can we do that? Because it just I want to make it come out, or it just kind of comes out. Ninety percent, Jim of the things that I've said that I regretted yeah. came at the moment of peak emotion. I don't generally premeditate to lash out at somebody. Right. By its very definition, lashing out is an impulsive emotional act. I have found that, and there's research to support this, that peak emotion doesn't last very long. 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, it, it, it really, it surges and it hits, and then it starts to come down. If you can not act right here, right. and give it 10 to 20 seconds to come down, your self-control will be enough to stifle your mouth. Wow. Because most That's people, 
Jim, when was the last time that somebody actually hurt you by punching you in the head? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But when was the last time somebody hurt you with this? This, this is the damage we do now, okay? So because of that, if, if, I, can, if I can just, know, if I can know, if I can believe that this, this fiery feeling isn't gonna last very long, just don't, don't say it, Ray, right when you most wanna say it, most think you can't, you can't resist. If I let that pass, not much, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, I find that I don't have quite the urge to say it, and later I'm so glad I didn't say it. Why would I say that to my mom? That was so dumb to yeah. think to say that. Yeah. Well, yeah, you think that scripture verse, I guess it's from James, you know, it's how we've trained everything and have conquered everything, but that the tongue, the tongue is an unwieldy member. With we, we bless God and we curse man, our wives, our children. Many things have been tamed, but not the tongue. It's a world of fire, a world of fire what you're saying is very helpful because I'm saying, well, if I could just not do that for 15, 15 seconds, seconds, just kind of back just off here, just this know. is going to pass. It's good to know because it's kind of it's saying like pass. you can't control this. Yeah, you're not going to sit there for four minutes having to go. Yeah. That doesn't <laughs> happen, okay? If I'm going to respond and lash out at you, it's because I want to in those first minutes when those emotions, authentic emotions, are making me want to let you have it. Yeah. It, it, in the marital relationship context, when we're doing that, perhaps some of the reasons for wanting to do that is that we're hurt from our mate. And so we figure, and we haven't really dealt with that or talked it through to some degree when we can talk it through. And therefore, I take this occasion to let her have it or to let him have it. Or does it go back to I'm insecure? Not me personally, but the other person. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, you said that. So wh wh why would we do that with our spouse? I'm just wondering, I feel hurt, or you never, you, you've hurt me, you said something, or I tell you I'm sorry, you never say you're sorry. When I was younger, that was my thing. If I say I'm sorry, you gotta say you're sorry. You, know, you make sure you have to say you're sorry. Come on, yeah, like, like, I'm always the one. <laughs> okay. When somebody's prickly or easily offended, underneath it all is the attitude of how dare you how can you say that about me? I don't deserve that. You need to look at yourself a little bit before you say those things about me. She says, it's, just, it's this attitude of, you can't say that. Why would you say that? I, I don't, I'm not like that. And that just, that just surges us. Lawyers will tell you, and you know this, Jim, because you do a lot of work in this area, anybody can sue anybody for anything. Mm -hmm. There's a parallel social law. Anybody can say anything to anybody at any time. So if you recognize that somebody you care about or somebody in your life says something that you really find hurtful or offensive or, or peevish, you tell yourself, okay, they shouldn't have said it, but they did. That's the problem. I, I, I expect you not to say that. What do you mean I expect you not to say it? He said it. Okay, that'll at least dampen some of my reaction if I know that when you get upset, you could be prone to say some things. <laughs> I've had that experience with you as my wife or my husband. Yeah. Okay, it's not going to shake me up because each yeah. and every time. Jim, I get people coming into my office after 28 years of marriage. And they still are getting upset over the exact same thing that they were upset about 4,292 times ago. And they've never gotten to the point where they said, huh, well, you know, what do I expect? This is happening. Uh, I've yeah. tried to stop it. I've tried to persuade, not gone anywhere with right. it. So why am I going to keep myself upset? I had a woman call me. She'd been married 54 years. Mm. She said, my husband never apologizes. Never. Makes me angry every single time he doesn't apologize. Yeah. And I said, how long have you been married? <laughs> she goes, 54 years. <laughs> I go, well, how many more years do you think you need to realize he's not a guy that's going to apologize? Well, that's in your saying it's okay. 
No, I'm not saying any such thing. I'm just simply saying that's reality. He doesn't apologize. Yeah. So how long are you going to keep yourself agitated wow. over the fact that he doesn't apologize? 54 years, is that enough? Half a century? I don't know. That's important. I, I'm thinking of somebody who spoke one time, maybe a guest or something, and said, you know, you know, I'm in the place in my life, you know, I was thinking I have to have a great marriage. And uh, I'm kind of like, well, yeah, I think you have it. She said, you know, like, I'm content with a good marriage. You know, like, like what you're saying, like, I'm not going to get this back at some point. And there's a lot that's good here. And this is just not, I'm getting older and older. This may never happen. I'd like it to happen, but it's not. And I'm in. I thought, wow, that was really something. That's insightful. Sure. Because so <laughs> much of marital peace, people will say this to me, Jim. They'll say, I, my spouse is wonderful. My spouse is just <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. But you know what he does? Yeah. And then they'll say this thing, this prickly thing that's bugged them for yeah. 27 years. And I'll say, well, if he's that wonderful, how is it that you've not been able to just look at this piece of behavior and say it's not going to go away right. I know. and I'm not going to agitate myself over it anymore? Yeah. They don't. It's like he should not do that. I told him. And part of the reason is if he loved me, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't want that logic used on me with God. You know, Ray, if you love me, you wouldn't sin. Ooh. Yeah. Doc, you mentioned in the book, uh, maybe I don't got the title right, but it, it's like genuine affirmation. Uh, uh, Add um, a touch? Uh, like to say something good about someone, to think it through. Or make a list. Make a list. Is that what it is? You make a list and, and really good. And it's, it's not like, well, I'm going to say 40 affirmations and everything's going to be okay. You're talking about something <laughs> Here's genuine. Here's my list. Yeah, here. <laughs> so speak to us ab about that. You know, I mean, I try to do that with, I think about Joy and periodically I would just say to her, you know, because as I'm moving, getting older, I'm saying, do you really know this area of what I say when you're not with me, what I think about you, or what I remember about you? Because I want you to know that, <laughs> you know? Um, is it that kind of thing? I mean, it's not like manipulative. I'm not no. doing it to be manipulative. Although, although a spouse might say you're trying to manipulate. Yeah, you they'll, said that say they'll, <laughs> try, they'll mistrust your motives. Why are you doing this now? Right. You haven't said a nice thing about me in two and a half years. Why now? <laughs> the reason I said make a list is because any writer will tell you if you're going to author a book, you got to put your thoughts onto that page because it makes you form them. It makes you think about them. So if I'm going to write a list of the things I love about my wife, appreciate about my wife, like about my wife, if I have to write them down, I'm not going to go, well, let's see. Okay, so she's really great with my one son. They have a close <laughs> relationship. What else? What else? What else? What else? <laughs> That's what can happen. Yeah. So you write it down, and I always tell people, make the list long. Don't have three items, because that's an insult. Here, I've been working on this for two weeks, and i got three items for you. You know, or the old, or the old, well, you're, you don't interrupt me as much as you used to. <laughs> it's the old, you're not as bad as you used to list. And so, yeah. My wife and I, uh -huh. when we were first married, we'd, we'd lay in bed and I'd go, okay, I'm going to tell you what I like about you. You know, so yeah. then I would, I would uh, yeah. go on for about 45 minutes. And then I'd say, okay, honey, you tell me. And she'd go, <laughs> um, I need some time to think. Well, okay, well, well, I made a list here uh -huh. and I handed her my list and I told you, just sign it. Just uh -huh. sign it. That is beautiful. <laughs> That is beautiful. When would you share that? Like, what, like you make your list and so... Oh, that's a good when point. When do you what, share What are it? optimum times? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, you can't have the kids around, okay? Yeah. You got a bunch of kids floating around. Make sure they're in bed, all right? Second of all, when you're at some private moment, maybe in bed, maybe watching... Some, well, don't watch anything. On the couch, take the remote away from your husband, put it over here. <laughs> yeah. So he has to, and you say, you know what, honey? I gotten pretty sloppy in telling you all the things I really, really love about you. Mm. So I decided to write them down. Now this isn't all of them, because I could keep <laughs> yeah. going. You always gotta say that. You always gotta say, is that your whole list? No, no, no. no. Everything I could think of. This isn't all of them. Yeah. But I, I think it's about time I, I, I let you know this again. Mm. And now don't say a word, honey. I just want to say these things absolutely love the way you always kiss me goodbye. I come home and I smell you cooking a beautiful meal and it's always so good. When I ask you, do you want me to drop you off in front because it's raining, you say, no, I'll walk with you. 
And you, you just go on with this stuff that, that he or she may not even know that you noticed. Because you never said anything. When's the last time you said, you know, you always want to walk with me even in the rain. You don't say, drop me off at the door and then you go park the car and walk in the rain. You always want to see the sun come up and I never do, but I, I do it because you make me do it. I would never would have seen a sunrise. You know, like, why do I want to see Because you want, you know, thank you, because that, that wouldn't happen in my life. I want to sleep, you know. Those things, like, you don't say it, like, thanks for culturing me, and thanks for, you know, it's like. <laughs> thanks for helping me dress. Thanks for telling me that shirt doesn't go yeah. with those pants. Dr. Ray, a delight to have you, and this is such a practical book of simple steps that can cascade into something wonderful in your life. So thank you so much. We well, just it. as a final thought, Jim, you know, yeah. my wife was reading this. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks up at me and she says, uh -uh. you've been pulling this stuff on me. <laughs> well, how long are you married? Uh, uh, honey, I, I'm not hesitating. I'm, I'm trying to get the exact yeah. number of hours. It's yeah. three to nine years. Yeah, so it's working. It's working. Well, back when we had 10 kids, we had 10 nuclear warheads aimed at each other. Because you leave me, you get custody. Oh, no, I'm not leaving. There you go. Thank you, Dr. Ray. We're going to take a break at this point. Again, the book is Simple Steps to a Stronger Marriage, EWTNRC.com. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. We have Father John Paul here with us to wrap up our time. Your thoughts on the show? I was reminded of a story of Mother Angelica was telling in a live show where she was in a conversation with a, a husband and wife, and they were telling the story of like, the husband was, you know, sitting back, having his breakfast, yeah. had the newspaper wide open, mm. and all of a sudden a fist comes right through the newspaper <laughs> and bops him right on the nose. He says, what did you do that for? And she said, well, I just remember something you said to me 40 years ago. Yeah. It just, it goes to show you, like, we can let things down so deep and not communicate what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. You know, part of marriage is learning how to, a big part of it is just learning how to communicate. Yeah. Part of life is learning how to communicate with people. Yeah. You know, what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Verbal communication and behavioral. Like, he uses the yeah. word manners, dignity, like things that you would teach your children. Hopefully, you are teaching our children. That, that's, that needs to happen in your marriage, whether you feel like it or not. You need to show that respect. Yeah, yeah. and there's some, there's some things that you shouldn't say either. The Holy Spirit, you know, <laughs> yeah. is, is also uh, prompting us not to say thir certain things. I love what he said, just wait 20, 30, 20 seconds. Sometimes Whatever you said, just seem to wait. Know, the edge is going to be taken off of your yeah. heat. And when you do say <clears> it, you're going to regret that you said it. This will go away. So that's good training. Yeah, right. I say that often in the confessional, you know, just wait wait to say things. You know. Close this with a prayer and a blessing, sure. Father, especially for married couples. Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you, and may he show you his kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in Thank peace. you, Father. Be sure to join us next week when we will be joined by two married couples to discuss living the faith in the midst of family life. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today. All together, we will build a new culture of life and marriage and the family. It will prevail. Christ will prevail. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now. <laughs>